All right, welcome back, everybody. It is week 10 in the NFL. We are now way, uh, a little bit, not way, but a little bit past halfway point in the season here. And uh, why not us, McLovin? Well, that's what the Ravens are saying, because they believe they can win out and make the playoffs. They enter their bye week four and five, but a favorable schedule down the stretch has them feeling pretty good about their playoff chances. Well, what's, who do they have? Uh, I mean, let's see. Anyone can. Let's, let's, let's see. Let me turn anyone my, can let me turn my sound on. Let me see what we got going on here. All right, they have. Uh, no, this isn't. Uh, this isn't the schedule. Here we go. Let's see what we got going down. All right, so Baltimore has this week. They have. Uh, they they're off. No, they they have a bye. Yeah. All right, so week eleven. Let's see what we got. Week eleven. They have, uh, they're at Green Bay. That could be a win. Sure. Uh, could be. Yeah. Week 12. Um, let's see here. Week 12. They have a Monday night game. Houston comes in. That should be that a win. That should be a win. So let's assume 2 and 0. Oh. Okay. Week 13. Week 13. Uh,. Detroit comes in. That's a loss. What are they two and one now? Well, they could know, be I mean, one and two. Detroit sucks. So uh, yeah. Detroit's I'm, I'm gonna, terrible. Well, look. I mean, Baltimore and Green Bay, or Baltimore and uh, what's the first game I mentioned? It could go either way. Green Bay. Green Bay could go either way. Houston. Houston. Green Bay. Houston and uh, Detroit, and uh, Detroit. And then home. they have. Then they have. Now fun. Baltimore's going into Detroit. So. Oh, 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 that changes everything. I think but let me, I'll have to read I'll have to go back into the uh fuck. Baltimore. Baltimore goes to Pittsburgh. That's a loss. That's a loss. So two and two. I mean no, I mean that's you know, now they're six and seven. Well at best they're three and one. Correct. So they'd be seven and six. Okay. Week fourteen, they go into Cleveland, that's a win. Yep. Four and one Or excuse me, week fifteen, I'm sorry, week fifteen they go into Cleveland. And then week 16, uh, Indy goes into them. That should be a win. Yep. And then the last week of the season. Since he goes into them, that could be a win, too. So, so but let's go back. Let's go back to no. It can't be seven and one. That's that's more than eight games. That's less. Than, they have less than eight games left. It's week ten. Week eleven. They play four and five. Nine and eight. Seventeen. So six and one. Six and one. What's so that would then they would be ten and six. But the deal is, I let me just make sure they go into Detroit, or if Detroit goes to them, I think that they go into Detroit. I don't see them winning, but I could be wrong. Do you want me to do say. No, I got it right here, man. Okay. Yeah, Detroit goes to Baltimore. So that's a different story now, yeah. okay? Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, the only game that they they shouldn't win is at Pittsburgh. Correct. So they if they go five and they go six and one. They'll go ten and six. They go ten and six. Or is that what are they right now? They're four and five, so they'd have to go six okay. and one. They'd be ten and six. I don't see them going six and one. I see them going maybe five and three or four and four. They should go six and one against those teams. But they also should have beaten a lot of teams that they didn't. Correct. So, having said that, who knows? Miles Garrett injuries to real first half of his rookie season. Nothing really there. Bucks. Uh, well, Miles Garrett. I mean, he's a first overall pick. Um, I think he's played like three games. In those three games, he has four sacks. Um, you know, this is another rookie defensive end. Um, you know, and I think he left early. I'm. I'm going to say he was a junior. Um, and. Um, a lot of times when young guys enter the draft, they don't have that last year of, to let their body develop, and a lot of times they get hurt. Um, but with that being said, you know, this guy is a great player, and um, we'll see if he can stay healthy. But, you know, 90% of the times when, when you start getting injured as a rookie, you know, the injuries are going to stay with you. So we'll see what happens with that with uh, 
Gary. So the Bengals brought back tackle and NFLPA head Winston. Eric Winston's returning for a second stint with the Cincinnati Bengals. So to put right tackle Jake Fisher on the non-football illness list. Fisher's out for the rest of the season. Uh, Winston's a very good player. You know, it's a guy that um, I think he went to Miami, I think. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, good player. You know, we'll see what happens. Obviously, he hasn't been playing, so he might be a little rusty. Um, but, you know, they need all the help they can get. And um, to have a guy that knows the system and knows the offensive line, you know, uh, it's something that may will help them. I, I think they're dead in the water anyway, but, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Broncos right tackle Watson goes on IR with foot injury. Uh, right tackle Menelik Watson, I probably botched his first name, had hoped he'd have a quote, good, healthy season. <laughs> but a foot injury is him to the injured reserve. Watson hasn't played more than 12 games in any of his previous four seasons because of injuries. I'll tell you what, I mean, it seems like this year there's been more injuries than, than ever. Uh, it seems like everybody and their mother is getting hurt and missing games, and I think that goes back to uh, the preseason not being able to tackle. Um, and that the, the NFLPA doesn't allow, you know, contact during a lot of the, um, the, uh, the, the OTAs and then the um, – uh, training camp, so that's why you see these guys getting injured a lot. A lot of guys have gotten injured. 49ers inch closer to becoming favorite for number one overall pick in 2018 draft, and that's according to ESPN Analytics. Uh, the race for the top pick between the Browns and Niners has tightened significantly after the 49ers lost to Arizona. Uh, let's see. Will the Browns win? I don't know. Will the Niners win? I'm sure the Niners... I, I, look, the Niners are terrible. They're absolutely, absolutely horrible. They have one of the worst offenses I've ever seen in my life. Um, their top receivers down. Uh, Carlos Hyde can only do so much. Uh, C.J. Uh, Berthard or whatever the hell his name is is really is just terrible. Um, you know, I took them to beat Arizona. I thought they would in Arizona. It wasn't even a game. San Francisco could not move the ball. I look. They need a lot of help. Um, they're, I mean, these teams that are bad in the NFL are bad, like bad, like not even. I mean, uh, even that Detroit team that went on sixteen back in uh, to what two thousand seven, two thousand eight were better than than these teams. Um, with that being said, I, I think that um, you know, the, I think the Niners will get a win somewhere along the way. But you know, it, it, the, the the time is you know ticking, so. Um, you know, and then it'll come down to them in, in Cleveland, and then uh, whoever gets the first pick, you know, that's a question. They have, uh, I guess, the top pick is a, a quarterback from somewhere, you know. Then they'll be, you know, you'll see them probably trade out if, if, if they have a, if they have a number one overall pick. If Cleveland has a number one overall pick, they'll, I'm sure they'll take another quarterback and, you know, ruin his career. So Kellerman urges Luck to get out of Indianapolis, and he says as long as Jim Irsay owns the Colts, Andrew Luck needs to figure out a way out of town. Well, I, I read something this week about Ursay and, and how the fact that the training um, staff, I guess, led him along to believe that Lick, Luck was going to be ready for the season, and he came out and tweeted, you know, he's all ready to go, be ready for him week one, and then here we sit in week, you know, nine or ten, and, you know, he's done for the year on IR. So if there's a miscommunication between, you know, uh, upper management and the training staff, that's bad, bad news. I mean... I think we talked a little bit about Indy last week with Frank Gore, and um, you know the team's in shambles. They got a, they got a clean house from the top, um, and it's, I think you know Ursay does not help things. Well, um, you know where he stands. Vikings activate quarterback Bridgewater and Bradford to IR. The Vikings have activated quarterback Teddy Bridgewater and placed Sam Bradford on injured reserve, shutting him down for the rest of the regular season. Another injury to a quarterback. Uh, you know, I think, uh, well, it's been, it's got to be close to, uh, you know, 17, 16 months since, you know, we were up at the that, your video store there on the last day of August when he tore his ACL. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were talking about him. Minnesota was gearing to have a, have a really good year and they lost him. Was like, it was more yeah. than a year ago. A year ago, summer. Yeah, oh, a year ago, said, summer. I thought you said seven, eight months. I'm sorry. I said 17 or 16 or 17 oh, months okay, ago. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, now to reactivate them, I, you know, Minnesota. Uh, look, where Minnesota is, they're in a good spot. I, I, I play Keenum just because he, he's been playing all year. Um, he has a good relationship, you know, with, with the tight end and the wide receiver, Thien, or, uh, and, um, you know, Kyle Rudolph and Stefan Diggs, and they have a, a good, you know, McKinley and, and um, the other back there, the guy who used to play for uh, 
uh, Murray. So I think they should stick. You know, they might activate him, but I don't think you'll see him playing unless um, he's, you know, someone gets injured. But um, I think Minnesota's in a great spot right now, and it's really, when you look at the NFC North division, it's really their division to lose. And, um, you know, they have a, a big game this week at, at um, you know, Washington. Should be a good, should be one of the better week, games this week. So we'll see how they can uh, go forward. But I don't think you'll see Bridgewater playing unless, you know, Keenan gets hurt. Chris Hogan, Malcolm Brown, and Marcus Cannon on a Patriots practice. Receiver Philip Dorsett could see increased snaps if Chris Hogan can't play Sunday in Denver. Has Philip Dorsett even done anything? I mean, they traded no, Dorsett no. for Well, the thing is, is, you know, when you look at what New England does, okay, when, they're, when their receivers are out there, they, you know, they, they'll have, you know, Cooks, Amadola, and, and, um, and, uh, and Hogan. And, you know, their fourth receiver is, is Gronkowski. So... Even when they have a three three wide out set, he he's like the fourth wide out, which you know he'll he'll move into where Hogan was. But you know they traded a, a quarterback for him, and, and I, at the time I thought it was a great trade. He you know Dorsett's a you know a speed guy to get the ball in his hands, so I'm sure you're going to see him getting a lot of targets this week. Um, they're going to throw the ball a lot uh, against Oakland, and um, you know and not having Hogan's a you know tough guy but you know that shoulder injury that's it doesn't look good he's gonna be out for at least you know this week and probably next week after a bye week um you know injuries are injuries they're gonna happen and, and, and New England does a great job of rebounding so supposedly ESPN reporter Josina oh, Anderson God. okay she relayed frustrations that the Giants players have shared with her about coach Ben McAdoo uh, I don't know what those I mean, are because I can't play this video due to copyright uh well, look, look, I don't need to see it. Um, just, is this the same broad? No, that, just Jamil Hill. Jamil Hill. Just no, no, this she, is just she's Anderson. a she's a uh, uh, is she from the same uh, hood? I don't know. Oh, um, anyway, uh, I was trying to communicate something with you, but I, I know what it was. <laughs> I know what it is. That's what I'm saying. I'll so. A lot of these players, okay, with these reporters, these sideline reporters are, you know, pretty, uh, they're, uh, it's not, uh, it's not Casey Burr on the sidelines here, you know, it's, it's, you're not talking about hogs or they're, 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 um, you know, they're hot, they're, they're pretty, they're, you know, all this, they put them there for a reason to get information out of these guys, so, I don't know, I, I've seen a lot of our guys, you know, um, young guys who are, you know, in the NFL at a young age, they'll, they'll do a lot of things and, and on the side, and a lot of shenanigans. So I don't know if it's true. Um, with that being said, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, whenever you're, you know, one and whatever, and you just got your asses handed to you by the Rams at home, um, I think they gave, what, 48 points up. Um, with that being said, you know. 51. 51. <laughs> so 51 points, you know, I think a lot of – Obviously, a lot of people have lost faith. The fans have lost faith. You know, obviously, uh, players aren't showing up when they need to show up. So I, I'm not shocked to see that uh, that they're not quote unquote listening to um, you know their head coach. But you know, I think there's going to be a lot of changes in, in in New York, and I think it needs to start with the, the general manager um, and Reese. So uh, I don't know if. if uh, Big Ben McAdoo will be back, but, you know, only time will tell. Leonard Fortunate explains that he was benched for the Jaguars' Week 9 game to do a misunderstanding with management. Well, that misunderstanding, you know, uh, caused him to be deactivated, caused him to lose a game check, caused him to, you know, uh, continue to have a, a solid rookie year, you know. And, um, you know, they didn't drop, a, you know, they didn't skip a beat. They had... Uh, you know, who, uh, who what's the other running back there, the guy that, you know, was kind of tossed to the side. Um, uh, I can't think of his name. Yeldon, TJ Yeldon has really stepped in. Um, and they didn't really miss him, you know. And, and whether whatever happened, I don't know what happened. I just read that early that morning or the Saturday that he was deactivated for the game. So, you know, anytime you get deactivated for the game, you must, you must have done, done something stupid. So uh, hopefully he learns from that because, you know, if they had lost that game, you know, it's, uh, that'd be a bigger loss and it was a bigger win. Uh, Jets GM not discouraged by Christian Hackenberg. However, Mike, you want to help me out with the last name? From where? Jets. Mike, for what was McCagnin? it? Um, yeah, Mike McCagney. Mike, Mike yeah. McCagnin. Yeah. Said the Jets third string quarterback has done some, quote, positive things, but overall gave a lukewarm assessment. 
what are they, I mean, what's he going to say, you know, yeah, yeah, kid is, you don't want to make, you know, comments like he's the next Brett Favre and at the same time as a third string quarterback. I mean, you know, these guys are third string for a reason, but if they're, they're going out there and doing their job, then what do you want the guy to say? Um, the Jets, you know, hey, you, you got to give them a lot of credit. I mean, this is a bad, bad football team, and they just went and cleaned the clock, the, you know, the, the, the Buffalo Bills. Who, Buffalo is such a... They're such a question mark every single year. Who are the Buffalo Bills? You know, it's just like you can't figure them out. You really can't. Um, and, and you know, going in on a Thursday night game, this is a must win for you know. Uh, well, it's a game that they can't lose. And, and the Jets, you know, that whole game was thirty-four to seven until the Jets, you know, the, the Bills scored some late touchdowns. But the Jets are beating the game. They're winning the games they should win, and that's what you have to do in the NFL. So. Uh, um, you know, McCown's had a, a you know decent year compared, you know, with, with absolutely zero talent out there. Martellus Bennett's tenure with the Packers essentially ended at the bye. Martellus Bennett's short time at Green Bay was marked by inconsistent play and drop passes as the tight end never found his fit in the offense. What are the chances of Patriots reunion with Martellus Bennett? He could help the Patriots, especially in the red zone, but he's subject to waivers and New England would be low on the claim list. Take a look at a picture of Martellus Bennett. He looks like he dropped 50, 40 pounds. Maybe he's on drugs. But um, what a what a what a turnaround from where he was, you know, back in in, in February to where he is now. You know, um, I'd love to see anyone pick him back up and and, and, and go from there. But you know, there's got to be some underlining issues there. Um, I'm sure a lot of teams will put the, the 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 waiver claims in. I think he has the right to you know pick where he wants to go if he's cut. So maybe he'll go back to uh, you know New England. So we'll see. He does have the, really. He has the right. I don't think waivers uh, waivers work that way. Is it different in football than it is in baseball? I I want to say no. I think in waivers, somebody puts you on waivers. You're claimed. You're fought. I went well. No, I mean I think if you're claimed, you can become a free agent maybe. But no, I, I think you're fucked. I think whoever claims you, you're fucked. Okay. I, I could well, well. I mean we'll look it up. But I'm pretty sure. Comment in the comment section below how waivers work. Um, I should know this, but I guess. Jets disaster last year still haunts Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick, who will make his first start for the Bucks on Sunday against the Jets, almost retired after last season's debacle. Not only does Ryan Fitzpatrick, but Patrick Fitzhenry. What's Patrick Fitzhenry? You don't get it? The, uh, his backward name? No, you don't get it? We Ryan know. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. And Patrick Fitzhenry. Who's Fitzhenry? Fitz. F-I-T-S. Fitz. F-I-T-S. Henry? Fitz. He Fitz. fits him. Oh, Fitz Henry? You don't you still don't get it. No. Alright. Fitz, F I T S. What yes. does that mean? Fitz, like it fits inside something. Sure. Ryan Fitz Patrick. Patrick Fitz Henry. You don't get it? Who's Henry? You are missing the point. That's his last name, Patrick Fitz Henry. Who is he? It's irrelevant. It's just a name. Patrick Fitz Henry. I, I Do you know. get Ryan Fitzpatrick? Do you get that? Yeah, that's his name. Okay, no, you, you don't get the joke, though. Patrick Fitzhenry? No, stop. Let's go back to Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's the guy's quarterback. That's the guy's name. name. Okay, okay. Fine. So, Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's a play on his name. But that's his name. I get it. Sure. Just like Patrick Fitzhenry. But there's no Henry. There's probably a guy out there somewhere named Patrick Fitzhenry. What does that have to do with him starting this week? It doesn't. I'm just talking about his name, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, you're saying, okay. But there's no Henry. A separate person named Patrick Fitzhenry. Just a separate person out in the world is named well, Patrick Well, what does it have to do with the article? It doesn't. I was making a joke. Oh. I guarantee it, 90% of foot uh, YouTube is going to get this. Could be wrong. Comment Great. in the comment section below if you don't get the joke. I get it, but what is the relevance? It's a joke. <laughs> oh, just because he fits into Henry? Correct. Yes. Okay. He fits I, into Henry. They're gay. They're gay. I get it. I get it. Okay. So, they, he, they, he, he takes really, up the... No, it's a random person. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the name okay. Fitzpatrick. It's I, an old... It's a, whatever. Sorry. All right. That's all right. Um, let's see here. John always sought and won full control of Denver's football operation, but after the team hit another low point on the field in the form of a 51-23 drubbing Oof. by the Eagles, what is the path forward? The path forward is they need a quarterback. The path forward is John Elway is a very ego. He's, his ego is he thought that 
you know, when they won the Super Bowl, he could get away with, you know, not having a good quarterback, but they had a great defense. And now, you know, they really haven't done a lot to, to up, uh, you know, uh, on the offensive side of the ball. And, um, you know, uh, I guess, you, it, I mean, if your ownership, you're kind of in a tough spot. That's what happens when you, when you have these guys that are legends on the field for teams like Magic Johnson with the Lakers or, you know, Larry Bird, you know, um, or like, you know, um, Elway in this, in this case, you know, running a team that he won Super Bowls with, if it fails, then what do you do? Do you fire him? I mean, so, um, you know, you got to figure out something out soon, but without players, you can't win. Speaking of teams without players, Packers Bulaga done for the year with a knee injury. Packers right tackle Brian Bulaga will be out for the rest of the season with a torn ACL, ESPN has confirmed. Another injury, another injury for a team that has been decimated with injuries. You know, they're done for the year. Uh, um, I know they got a game against uh, Chicago this week, but uh, I think you can pretty much uh, count, uh, uh, count the um, Packers out for the this, rest of the year. This is a funny, funny uh, headline to an article now. The more Brett Hundley plays, the more his trade value plummets. <laughs> An NFL executive said that Hundley's trade value is currently, quote, nothing, as a quarterback has struggled since taking over as a Packers starter. Well, think about it. You know, what did uh, the Pats give up a seventh rounder for Brissett, you know? So if, if that's what Brissett's, you know, trade value is, Hun Hundley's garbage, okay? This guy is terrible. Um, you know, that when you, when you look at the, the NFL, okay, you know, um, you, you obviously you need to win with a with a uh, a great starting quarterback, and a lot of teams have that, but only a short amount of teams have a legitimate backup that can come in. Now, backup quarterbacks are just as hard to find as starting quarterbacks. Okay, Brett Hundley, you know, is not a guy that can come in and at least you know stop the bleeding. He's he's a guy that's never going to win a football game for you. That's why the New England had such a rare situation where. They had a guy then Jimmy, and then they even had a third string guy that that's won NFL games before. So you know that that backup position at quarterback, you know, go go through the teams this year, and you know, look at Miami. Matt Moore is I think is worse than than, than Hundley. Um, some of these quarterbacks are just absolute garbage. Brian Hoyer, C.J. Berthard, they're just they're they're so bad. It's it, 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 it really it's a shame to the game of football to watch some of these these quarterbacks play. Um, you know, and it really makes the team look bad. It makes the front office look bad, and you know, it doesn't make the fans happy. So here's a Josina uh, uh, Josina uh, Anderson article. Uh, DRC and Landon Collins, Dominic Rogers, Cromartie, and Landon Collins dispute two teammates saying Ben Mack to his lost Giants. Here we go. Uh, two New York Giants players told ESPN's Josina Anderson that coach Ben McAdoo no longer is support of his one and seven team. Quote, McAdoo has lost this team, one player who asked to remain anonymous told Anderson. <laughs> Quote, he's got us going 80% on Saturdays before we get on a plane to play a game. It's wild. Changed our off day. He's dishing out fines like crazy. Suspended two of our stars when we need them the most. Oh. Throws us under the bus all the time. Oh. He's ran us into the ground and people wonder why we've been getting got. Oh. A second player who also requested anonymity <laughs> told Anderson, Quote, guys are giving up on the season and nothing's being done. Guys just don't care anymore. Those comments from both players came last week before the Giants lost 51-17 to to the Los Angeles Rams at MetLife Stadium in one of the worst home losses in the team's history. On Wednesday, the two players reiterated the comments, with one saying the coach, quote, didn't really have anything for us at halftime of that game, and the other saying, quote, I feel like we really don't got a leader in Coach McAdoo. Uh, on, Wednesday, well, uh, on, on Wednesday, Giants safety lane in Collins disputed the notion that McAdoo had lost the team, Quote, McAdoo has been leading the same way he led last year, so I don't knock the way he has been doing things, Colin said. Finding people like crazy? If you don't follow the rules, you get in trouble because you got to play the con got to pay the consequences. I wouldn't say he lost the team. I have the utmost respect for him. He's been doing a great job just trying to figure it all out. Trying to figure it out like we all are. Quote, McAdoo has it all. He can lead men. He can do whatever you say. He has the ability to do those things. It's not McAdoo. It's everybody. Everybody has to look in the mirror. The coaching staff, the coordinators, the players, everybody. Giants quarterback Dominique Rogers Cromartie, who was suspended by McAdoo on October 11th after a sideline altercation, agreed with Collins that McAdoo had lost the team. He also said that the players needed to look at themselves. Quote, I'm an old head. I've seen a lot of locker rooms, and I know for a fact this locker room ain't lost. I've seen a lost locker room. I know what guys do. Rogers Cromartie said, they come to practice lackadaisical. They don't have a care. Nothing really matters no more, and I don't see that happening. 
I'll say that we are still trying to find our identity, who we want to be. At times we show the team that we know we are, and at times we don't, and we got to figure out why is that. One of the two anonymous Giants players said Wednesday that he thinks the organization is still in the midst of being at rock bottom. I would say this last week against the Rams, even after the game, a lot of guys were like at their wits end, the player said. You could tell even on the sidelines. I just got the vibe. You can tell when the team has quit, and it just felt like we did. It felt like nobody wanted to be there, and the whole week McAdoo didn't give us the day off last week after players returned from the team's bye. Guys were a little upset about that, even though we did get a bye week, so the morale was kind of shaky. The player also said that some players did not like that McAdoo characterized the dropping by the Rams as one of the Giants' worst losses in history. I think a lot of the guys watched the press conference after the game like a lot of guys do, just to see what McAdoo says, the player said. When McAdoo said, um, to the question, what did you tell the team at halftime? And McAdoo just said, um, he didn't really have anything. Man, he didn't really have anything for us when we came back in the locker room, too. It was just kind of like the same old, same old. You can just see guys were like, you can just tell that nobody was kind of following it. The other anonymous player also said Wednesday, I'm going to keep it 100, and I'm going to tell it like it is. <laughs> and it's terrible, man. I feel like we really don't got a leader in Coach McAdoo. Oh, my McAdoo. God, his grammar's terrible. Going from Coach Tom Coughlin <laughs> A leader who just had that presence. Like, if you were doing something wrong, like on the phone in the hallway, walking by, like Hoffman is going to say something to you. Coach McAdoo, on the other hand, would see you on the phone in the hallway, walk by you, and then find you. Rogers Cromartie is taking the view of a player who has been through a lot. At the end of the day, we have eight more games to get it right. The game against the Rams was terrible. I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. Oh, my God. In that game, you had people running wide open. Ain't no way in hell anybody expected us to come off of by and play like that. But I'm telling you, McAdoo has our support, Rogers Cromartie added. It's just been a tough season. It is what it is. It's everybody's fault. It's not just one person to blame. Can't just blame Coach McAdoo. Can't blame General Manager Mr. Jerry Reese. Can't blame the offensive staff. It's everybody. Oh, boy. Oh. I'll tell you what, you know. Um, His grammar is terrible. Uh, Horrible. I don't like anonymous, you know. Look, just come out in in in. in Say what you need to say, but take credit for it. And uh, look, uh, the only one that you know, oh, John the Mayer, the the, the, uh, the the one anonymous guy has, you know, who's keeping it one hundred. I'm sure if you went and said that, to, you know, my father or you know uh, Tom Coughlin or they have no idea what that means. Okay, keeping it one hundred. <laughs> Do you know what keeping it one hundred means? Sure. Okay. Being honest, keeping it real. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, it's one love. 100 is one love. Oh, I didn't know that. I, yeah. thought, I thought it meant, I thought it meant keep, if you keep it 100, you're being fucking real. That's what I think it means. Let's go, let's go to the fucking Urban Dictionary. Okay. I'm telling you right now, I, I don't think that's, I thought, I don't think that's accurate. Some, but you see the... No, one is one love. 100, 100 is, is keeping it real. What does keeping it 100 mean? To keep yourself real and true. I was right. To be honest and stick to the way you are no matter what anyone else thinks. i got to stay focused and keep it 100 these last few weeks of high school so I can get into college, and that's real talk. Or, you don't have to like my decision. I'm going to keep it 100, and I do what feels right. So I was right. I was right. One is one love. 100 is keeping it real. Well, they... So yes, I do know what it means to answer your question. <laughs> Well, uh, um, these it, it's sad that these guys are making millions of dollars and they can't even speak right, and teachers are out there making 50000 And I don't care about the Giants. I hate the Giants. I, I don't even want to discuss the Giants. And I hope they lose every game, and I hope they um, never play football again. All right, well, let's go into last week. So, we had an interesting week. Uh, the beginning of the video last week, I wanted to see how many people are actually watching the video. And I mentioned that if you didn't have your, all your picks in on Thursday, you were disqualified. Only one person uh, ended up doing that. It was Blake Rios. No, Blake Rios, I'm sorry, your picks don't count because you pretty much just copied what Vatic said and said hopefully these picks are, 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 picks are still valid, but they're not. They're not valid because you didn't watch the video on, on, on when it was uploaded. You didn't get all your picks in by Thursday. You went on 13. Everybody else, though, thank you for following directions. So, uh, last week we had yes to anything that is cool, awesome, uh, you went 9-4, and four, you get a gift card, you beat McLovin. Vatix 9-4, and four, you get a gift card, you beat McLovin. Cali Guy 8-5, and five, you beat McLovin, you get a gift card. And Love Maker, no, you tied him. Um, and then Jennifer, you went 9-4, and four, you get a gift card. 
you get a gift card. And Diego, uh, Diego, you went eight and five, you get a gift card. And that is it. Uh, remember, gift cards are handed out after the Super Bowl. I will contact you guys here on Facebook, on Facebook, on YouTube, and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out, and then I can send you the gift cards through the mail or however you want it done. So last week, let's go right on into it. Yes to anything that's cool, awesome, went 9-4. and four. Uh, Vaddix, 9-4. and four. Steve Golden, 5-8. and eight. CB Gun, 7-6. and six. Cali Guy, 8-5. Dan McLean, 5-8. and eight. Love Maker, 7-6. and six. Now, yes, I did get your comment about CB Gun changing his picks. However, he changed it. He edited it six days ago. So he literally did it Wednesday night. That's perfectly fine. And even if he had edited it on Thursday, it still would have counted because the picks were in. And the game, as long as you don't touch your picks or comments on Sunday, if you do that, it doesn't count. Uh, but he, he was fine. I did check in on that. Now, uh, the standings, the updated standings, here we go. In first place, there is Dan McLean at 80 and 52. He went 5 and 8 last week. Uh, second place, yes to anything that is cool, awesome, and tied for second. We also have CB Gun at 79 and 53. They're only a game out. Dan McLean had a horrible week, and it killed you so far. Uh, then in fourth place, we have Vadix at 77 and 55. We also have Lev Maker at 77 and 55. They're three games out. Sixth place, Steve Goldman, 74 and 58, six games out. And then CB Gun in last place at 79 and 50, or excuse me, uh, Cali Guy in last place at 72 and 60, um, eight games out. But not bad, Cali Guy. A lot better than last year. I think you were way under 500 last year. 12 games over right now. Good for him. He's a good guy. Yeah. In the other uh, standings, Jennifer, you are now tied with Blake Rios because he went 0-13 for being disqualified. So you guys are 48-37. And Dennis Ramirez didn't put his picks in. He's 0-13, so he's now at 42-43. and 43. Uh, Pretty much no shot. Well, there's only six games out, so you never know. All right, last week against the spread, I went 5-7-1. and one. McLovin went 7-5-1. and one. The updated standings there, uh, McLovin is in first at 63-65-4. And, and I am five uh, games out. I am 58-70-4. And, um, and then last week, uh, for the just the straight picks, I ended up beating McLovin in EDP by a game. 7-6, they both went 6-7. So the updated standings, McLovin is now tied with Dan McLean at 80 and 52 uh, for the overall what lead. What was Dan McLean last week? Five and eight. And what was that? You were six and seven. I thought I took a lead on him last you week. You did. You had a game. Uh, no, no. You did, did you? I yeah. don't think so. Hold on. Let's see. Maybe you're right. I took a two. Dan McLean went eight and five. It was 75 and 44. Okay. 75 and 44. And you were 76 and 43. So 76 and 6 is 82. 43 and 7 is 50. You're 50. What do I have you at? Yeah, 82 and 50. And what's the. Oh, he's 80 and 52. I, yeah. I, I had this right. I just said it wrong. Okay. I, I got dyslexic right. for a minute. Dan McLean's too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. I, I was dyslexic when I fucking read it. It looked the same to me, and it technically was. It just I, I switched the wins and losses. All right, everything's right on here. Um, you're two games above. Uh, I'm seven out at 75 and 57, and then the EDP went, uh, he is now 37 and 51 in, our, in his time with us. So let's go right on into Thursday's uh, spread. Okay, we're going to go into the spread here, uh, the spread offense here. The spread, the spread, Make spread. Sure write these down. I'm doing it right. Yeah, Seattle five and three Thursday night's game tomorrow night. Seattle five and three, two and two on the road against Arizona. Four and four, two and one at home. Seattle on the road favored by six. Um, I am going to take the Cardinals plus six. All right, same here. Sunday's games: New Orleans six and two, three and one on the road against Buffalo. Five and three, four and zero oh at home. New Orleans favored by three. Uh, Bills, I can't figure them out. Um, I think they'll bounce back. Bills plus three. Okay, I'm taking New Orleans. All right, Green Bay. Four and four, one and two on the road against Chicago. Three and five, two and two at home. Chicago favored by five and a half. 
I'm going to take Green Bay plus five and a half. Taking Chicago. Cleveland 0 and 8, 0 and 3 on the road against Detroit 4 and 4, 1 and 3 at home. Uh, Detroit favored by 12. Uh, Cleveland plus 12. I agree. Cincinnati 3 and 5, 1 and 3 on the road against Tennessee 5 and 3, 3 and 1 at home. Tennessee favored by 4 and a half at home. Uh, Bengals suck. So the Titans. I agree. Wait, hold on. I haven't taken anybody yet. Oh, I thought you said Bengals suck, so the Titans. I said so do the Titans. Oh, all right. Well, I'm taking Tennessee for yeah, Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Titans minus four and a half. All right, Pittsburgh, six and two, four and one on the road against Indianapolis, three and six, two and two at home. Pittsburgh favored by 10. Oh, God. Pittsburgh. <laughs> These are tough. This is a trap game. This is tough. I mean, you take a teaser, you take Colts plus like 17. Uh, I take I do the other way around. But you take Pittsburgh minus yeah, three. Right. Well, the Colts, you can't. Look, they're at home. Kobe Brissett played well last week. Look, week. I'm going to take the Colts plus 10. Okay, I'm taking Pittsburgh minus 10. That's a lot of points. Yep. Yeah. i got to gamble here. Um, Jets, 4-5, and 1-3 and three on the road against Buccaneers, 2-6, two 2-2 and, six, two and two at home. Jets minus 2.5. Uh, James Winston isn't playing. I'm taking the Jets. Minus two and a half. I'm taking the Jets to win that. Uh, Winston's not playing, right? Correct. Uh, Josh McCown is. Or excuse me. No. Uh, 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 Fitzpatrick. Oh, uh, Fitzhenry. Fitzhenry. <laughs> <laughs> Jets. Minus, I can't believe we're taking... No, the Jets? Jets I guess you have to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you taking the Jets? I uh, yes. All right. Yes. Minnesota, 6-2, and 2-1 two, two and one on the road against Washington, 4-4, four 2-2 and four, two and two at home. Decent game here. Minnesota on the road, favored by one. I'm taking Washington. I'm taking Minnesota. So Washington plus one. Yep. All right, next up, Los Angeles Chargers, three and five, two and two on the road against Jacksonville. Five and three, two and two at home. Jacksonville at home, favored by three and a half. Uh, shit. Um, Jags. Chargers plus the points. I agree. Houston, the 4-5 game. Houston, 3-5, 1-2 on the road against Los Angeles Rams, 6-2, 2-2 at home. Rams favored by 12. Oh, God. The Texans are garbage. Uh, the Rams, their offense is fine at all cylinders. Um, I'm taking the Rams minus 12. Yeah. 425 game, Dallas 5 and 3, 3 and 1 on the road against Atlanta, 4 and 4, 1 and 2 at home. Atlanta favored by 3. Is Ezekiel out of the I don't think so. Because last week you said he wasn't playing. Yeah, well, then the, then the day, it literally that night, it, it got, you know, Thursday has a hearing tomorrow. He's not going to be at practice. I don't know. I think I don't think he's playing. That's the why it's. Falcons coming. are garbage. Taking the Cowboys plus 3. All right. I am taking up. Whoop. Hold on. I'm taking Atlanta minus 3. Taking Dallas plus three. All right, the four twenty five game, another one. New York Giants one and seven, one and three on the oh, road boy. against the 49ers, oh. 0 and nine, zero and four. Oh. Oh. Giants favored by two and a half. Just think about it. This was in. Uh, Would you look six, at that? Six years ago, this was the uh, NFC Championship. You know, and Giants at 49ers. <laughs> um, God, this. I I'm gonna have to take the Giants minus two and a half just because the 49ers just a game. That you know they they they've they've had these home games where you're like okay this is the first this is their first one it's gotta be the Giants just got shellacked but the 49ers are absolutely garbage they're the worst team in the league their offense is 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 like a is like a six year old kid in a wheelchair you know <laughs> so I'm gonna take I'm uh, taking the San Francisco I'm taking San Francisco uh, Sunday night. Pat Patriot six and two, three and zero on the road, going into Denver after they got raped. Three and five, three and one at home. Pat's favored by seven and a half. Uh, see, this is the type of game where the Broncos are going to show up, but I'm still going to take New England minus seven and a half. So am I. And then Monday night game, awesome game here. Miami four and four, two and two on the road against Carolina, six and three, two and two at home. Carolina favored by nine. That's an easy one for me. Miami plus nine. Correct. For both of us. All right, it's about that time. It's about that time where we get EDP four four five on the show. Okay, he's coming at you, ho ass N words with another video. Yo, what's poppin'?
So I'll take a shot. Hey, what up, what up? What's up, man? How you been? I've been good in yourself, man. What's going on? Pretty good, man. Nine, nine and one Eagles, man. What do you think of that? Nah, man. We're eight and one, bro. We're about to go eight and eight, man, because some stupid bitch had a tie to the Eagles Super Bowl taking up on their fucking arms. Oh, really? Yep, so we fucked. Yeah, that's my bad. The Eagles are eight and one. I thought I could have sworn they were nine and one. My bad. I added another game to them. Um, all right, so let's go right on into it. Uh, Eagles best record in football. Uh, offense looks Carson Wentz, man. He's he's a fucking good quarterback. All right. Um, Thursday's game, tomorrow night's game, EDP. We got Seattle going into Arizona. Who do you have? Not Seattle. Arizona ain't shit. Seattle. Okay, um, oh, this is tied. You know something? No, I'm going to take Arizona. And the reason why I'm taking Arizona is because Seattle fucking barely scored any points against Washington. I, I, I can't, they, they uh, I, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, Seattle's probably going to win. Seattle's going to win, but I'm still taking Arizona just in case, just in case. Just in case they squeak out a fucking bullshit win like Washington did. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. New Orleans goes into Buffalo. Who do you got? Buffalo. <laughs> Lovin, who do you got? New Orleans, Buffalo. Uh, New Orleans. I'm also taking New Orleans. Next game, Green Bay goes into Chicago. Fucking that Chicago, man. Green Bay is shit without Aaron Rodgers, man. I also have Chicago. Um, Green Bay, Chicago. Uh, Chicago. We all have Chicago. Cleveland goes into Detroit. I'm going to take the Browns. Oh, boy. I'm taking Detroit. Okay, I'm also taking Detroit. Cincinnati goes into Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. We all have Tennessee. Pittsburgh goes into Indy. Pittsburgh. All right. The Jets go in to face Tampa. Oh, shit. Who's Tampa Bay's quarterback now that Tampa was in? Ryan Fitzpatrick, and he also he also fits Henry. Oh, fucking God. I'm going to take the, uh, who are they playing again? The Jets. I'm going to take the Jets. This is an interesting game because Josh McCown was with the Buccaneers. Fitzpatrick was with the Jets. Now they face each other's former teams. So you said you're taking the Jets? Is that who you said? Yeah, I'm taking the Jets. Yeah, I'm also taking, I'm taking the, Jets. the Jets. All right, McLovin takes the Jets. Minnesota and goes into Washington. Minnesota. Washington. I have Minnesota as well. McLovin takes Washington. Los Angeles Chargers, they face Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville. I'm taking the Chargers. Texans goes into the Rams. 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 Houston is. is yeah, good. that's easy. Dallas goes into Atlanta. Atlanta. Dallas. I'm also taking Atlanta. Giants goes into San Francisco. <laughs> So am I. Giants. EP, I mean, McLovin's taking the Giants. And then Sunday night's game, decent game. Uh, New England goes into Denver like they always fucking do. They never have a home fucking game against them. New England goes into Denver. Fuck, oh, man. That, that is going to be a good game, man, because they pissed the fuck off, man. Uh, I'm going to take Denver. New England. I'm also taking New England. And Miami goes into Carolina on Monday night. Carolina. Um, yeah, Carolina all the way. All right, EDP, thanks a lot for joining us again. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm always happy to be on. Sure. All right, man. Thanks, for See ya. Okie dokie. All right, guys. That has been Week 10. Thanks for watching. Uh, Celtics going for their 10th win in a row, and they're up 12 in the first quarter against the Lakers with a minute left. And the Bruins, what are they doing? They're tied with the Rangers 1-1. Let's see who's playing that. If it's Tuka, Tuka Rask, Tuka Rask, uh, because I have to play my hockey game tonight. And it is Tuka Rask.
whoop a dee do. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week for week 11. See ya.